let's look at an example of this rollover enhancement. Now, in this case, we have just a simple, um, simple shoulder situation, similar to what we would have in SS2. So let's look at the right edge of uh, sh shoulder here. Now I'm going to slide this to the side, rollovers, and just get directly into the rollover tool. You notice the different dialog. Obviously, that's one of the things of note. The important part here is obvious, obviously the reference point. The reference point is CL. The edge of pavement is mentioned here, so you know what slope you're looking at. In this case, we're monitoring the slope of this lane. If this sl slope changes, we are going to modify the shoulder as required by these settings. In this case, looking from a positive slope on high side super, we would have from infinity coming down to 0% on the high side difference, which is just managing the hand of curve here, more or less the positive and negative value, we have a negative 7 algebraic difference. On the low side, from 0% down to negative infinity, we have planar lock, basically the shoulder is the same slope of the road once it's greater than the 4% of the shoulder. So once this lane becomes 4%, they lock and they move on. That's the difference between why we have the high side and low side differences. So I'm going to just cancel out of this, close this, and I'm just going to go to the test tool, test vertical control. And you can see how that changes from the high side. We have the algebraic difference. It'll follow it. And then if we go to the low side, it has planar lock. So let's see this in action by simply going into the, the corridor itself. So right now, you can see within here, we have a dynamic section. And you can see that we have the 7% algebraic difference on the high side in this right-handed curve. And you can see the 2.2 um, difference, obviously making the 7. The low side, the planar lock. Now that's an easy example, and that's what we always had. So there's not much new there. So let's go to the second example. Okay, in this example, we have the more complex uh, example there shown in the uh, previous PowerPoint. You can see that we have a shoulder PI. So if I um, go to test vertical point controls, you can see that when we go to the low side, it locks. And as we go to the high side, once we get over 6%, the shoulder PI comes out, jumps out, and it locks to be planar with the road slope. And then the shoulder is then 1%. So Let's take a look and see how this was built. <clears throat> so I'm going to set up my view to show this. And I want to show this in a way where I can put this right here for focus, rollover, and let's see this side there. OK. So from this point, we're again looking from the, in essence, the lane. And we're looking from the CL to the road edge of pavement, as mentioned right here. So when the lane is positive infinity, greater than or um, equal to 6%, the high side of difference is zero. So basically when it's greater than 6%, it's going to match the cross slope of whatever the lane is. However, we have a different scenario here. When we go from 6% down to 0%, we would like that to be a negative 7 algebraic difference as we saw in the previous example. So we have two scenarios and the this new enhancement allows us to switch from one scenario to another without addition creating a points component display rules and, and making of switches and making a very complex template. So this really simplifies matters if you have to um, deal with your shoulders in this way. The low side's quite simple. It's just the same as we had before. Now let's take a look at the edge of shoulder. The first thing notice that it's constrained from the PI and for a horizontal and slope. So I'm going to go to the rollover constraints and this time it's a little bit different. Now we're looking at the slope of the actual shoulder. So you can see the references right edge of pavement to the um, parent point PIR. So when this slope is from infinity down to um, 6%, we want a fixed slope. So basically, whenever the shoulder is greater than 6%, we want it to be negative 1% for the outside, which is what that spec um, showed before that we saw in the PowerPoint. However, from 6% down to negative 4%, we want the shoulder, when it's referencing this lane slope, we want it to be 0%. We want these sh this shoulder to be continuously one slope all the way through. And obviously on the one side, negative um, 4% is the height of the shoulder, so that's arbitrary. We could actually change the number here, but it was just for um, display purposes. We just want it to be a normal low side super of 0%. So let's close that up. <clears throat> 
and let's look at the example here. So you can see here on the high side super at this right hand curve, we have 78.84%. When it's greater than 7.84%, we can see that we have the shoulder PI coming out at the same slope, and then we have the negative one down. And on the low side, we have the 784, 784, 784 as we define with, with the rollover. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to locate station via data point, and can, just as we're coming into the curve, and you can see a little bit more. As we're coming out of the curve, less than 6%, you can see that we have the 7% algebraic difference. On the low side, we're still greater than 4%. So we're still 5.38 and, and locked. So we're going to keep marching out of that. And you can see right now at 2.14%, we have the shoulders down at 4 on the other side, also 4%. And then we basically return to a normal crown situation, adverse crown, and back to normal crown. So this is what this uh, new enhancements allows you to do.